Welcome to Kaleidoscope. Let's talk. March is International Women's Month and we celebrate women. Yes, we do believe we are super women, but there's always the danger that expectations are way too high and keeping up the momentum can be tough. Burnout is one of the less talked of issues which we like to focus on Let's Talk today. In 2022, it was found that 25% of employees experienced burnout symptoms and more recent studies say that 52% of all workers could be feeling burnt out at work. One third of women in work reportedly suffer from burnout as opposed to 25% of men in the workforce. 69% of women cited work-life balance and mental well-being as a top reason for taking on a job. Sharing a very personal experience with me today is the Head of Secretariat of the American Chamber of Commerce, Rye Raymond. You are a mother, a daughter and a wife in a very complex family environment. Mm -hmm. How did you balance it all and how did it all lead you? Where did it lead you? Actually, to me, I became a mother when I was probably eight years old um, because uh, I come from a single parent family and uh, as my mom was out working and kind of, you know, putting the uh, foot on the table, uh, it became my role to be mom to my three siblings who were very young at the time. I started working when I was 14. Uh, so it's been a long, 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 long journey for me in motherhood, in uh, as a career, as a sibling. I've survived abuse um, in various forms. Um, and throughout that journey, what I realized is um, I kind of used the um, women in my life. My grandmother uh, is definitely one of them. Um, and I, as examples, using them as examples of strength, um, I always had this, I can survive this, I can do this. You keep pushing yourself over and over again because sometimes you have no choice but to push yourself. Unfortunately, this um, at some point resulted ultimately in uh, a burnout situation. Uh, which came last year. Uh, I had what's known as um, a stress-induced memory impairment situation. Um, so yes, it was challenging. I'm still coming out of it. There's still uh, kind of uh, a loss of memory in certain areas. My life is very fragmented uh, at the moment and yet I have to still balance all these various challenges and uh, situations. How did you figure out you were having a burnout or did it just come slap bang on you? Looking back, I realized that there were little signs that maybe I was not taking seriously. Uh, I kept feeling very uh, emotionless, um, not even tired. I think it goes beyond tired. It was just too tired to feel tired, if that makes sense. I use crystals. I believe in energies and auras. And I had an aura reading done. And when I was going in for it, um, we were having a conversation. I said, I just feel empty. I'm perfectly fine. I can get on with my day. I don't feel depressed. It's nothing like that. It's just that I feel blah. No, literally that was the word I used. And she did the oral reading and in fact she told me, she said, look, your problem is that your energy is down to like 20%. I don't know how you're even surviving. And I could physically feel that. Uh, but did I know it was burnout? No. Um, when it hit me, it did literally hit me slap bang. Um, there was a high stress incident with my kids, kind of broke down, I was upset about it and then I fell asleep um, and I woke up uh, having lost 15 years. I thought I was in 2009 and uh, I didn't recognize my children, I didn't recognize any of my friends, um, I didn't know where I was. Um, when I was taken to the hospital, I didn't recognize the hospital. Um, and it was a very scary situation, you know, you, you wonder if people are lying to you, who these people are, what is going on. Um, my son was, was brought into the room and I was, this, this, uh, you know, this is your son, Shai. And I'm like, no, that's not my son. Please get this, you know, strange hulking man because he's 21 now. And I remembered him as being six. So it was a very scary uh, kind of situation. And uh, yeah, it was wham. In our culture, Rai, what factors actually contribute to burnout, do you think? In Sri Lanka, for instance, one in four households is women-led. Um, it's a result of the war, it's a result of COVID, it's a result of various things. Um, but I think we put certain pressures on ourselves to do more, to be perfect, to never say no, to be 
uh, you know, to keep pushing and giving 150% rather than understanding that, hey, 100 is enough. Sometimes you have to let something fall by the way because it's impossible to do. Um, I feel that we, especially as women in an Asian society, in Sri Lankan society, we feel that we cannot ask for help, we must not ask for help. More than the cannot, I think it's must not. Even from our women friends, even from our own circle, we want to be the stronger one, we want to be the strongest. Um, and I think that needs to change, it's pressure we put on ourselves. Men and women both face burnout. Is there a gender component here? Do you think women uh, have more chances or more likely to suffer burnout than men? As things change, uh, men are a lot more involved in the household chores as well. Uh, men are a lot more involved in elder care, in child care. So there is, you know, uh, a moving away from that uh, patriarchal, misogynistic kind of society to a much more balanced society. Well, actually, men and women will burn out differently. It's a, because you're being, your burnout is caused by different factors and the way that you deal with it, the way that it happens is different. Um, it's also interesting that do we actually understand the concept of burnout and are we willing to accept it as burnout rather than finding a different name for it or thinking it's something else and just pushing through it. So that's something that maybe needs to be addressed. So as women, there's always this expectation that we must do it all, family, career, everything, basically everything. But the question is, should we do it all? My personal view, no. Uh, yes, I have done it. Um, for me, more from maybe circumstance. Um, so. If I, if I look at my life over the last, um, let's say, 25, 30 years, um, there isn't a day I haven't been working. There isn't a day that um, I have been able to wake up and just think, okay, I'm just going to rest because it's been, it's been a constant. Um, also, when you add to that the various challenges of uh, being a single parent, um, uh, a few years ago, um, the, uh, my children's father uh, got very ill and he was bedridden and we, you know, that was his care. Um, then in the midst of all this you continue working and uh, the job I do is challenging, in, I mean everybody's job is challenging but what I do is challenging in a different way because of the structure that we're with. The one thing that gives me great pleasure, which is actually studies, um, which I couldn't complete because I left school when I was 14. Um, strangely enough has been the one thing that I keep wanting to go back to. I haven't been able to go as far as I want to. But again, it comes back to the question of should we do it all? I think that for me, I did because certain things that were optional like my studies, it's what made me happy. Um, but I think that's where the decision needs to be made. How much of this do you actually need to do? Um, it's like just because you can do it, must you do it. You mentioned caring. So for the most part, primarily, it's the woman who's the caregiver. Now, companies don't realize that for the most part. I mean, you come to work, you do what you have to do and you go. But when it becomes clear that their women workers are overextended, how should companies react? Do they have things in place that they can focus on this? So I work a lot with various corporates um, and I see a lot of what uh, they're doing in terms of best practices um, and yes there is a shift toward considering employee mental health uh, looking at where people need a little bit of extra space and extra time uh, but is it enough um, I think it's a kind of two a, a two-way street um, on the one hand we as women need to understand that uh, yes we are doing a job of work and we need to understand where we draw the line and make sure that what we need to do is done. Certainly you might have an emergent situation and that's different, but as a general rule, if you make sure that you're doing what you need to do, um, then I think companies will be a lot more understanding in times that you can't meet um, kind of the requirement. Um, so it's a two-way street. So how can men help women deal with the demands that being a woman brings with it? The way that uh, men can maybe look at it is understand and accept that there will be times that you cannot um, tick the box or meet the burden. 
Um, I think women do that a lot more than men do. I think women understand or are willing to understand more when a man is unable to meet that burden. Uh, whereas men can do more to understand that a woman sometimes is unable to meet uh, what is expected. So looking at the corporate sector and industry sector, uh, the demands are more in general. So the workplace now has become one of those places where everything has to be done, time, speed, pressure. Uh, burnout is going to be inevitable in the future. Now, do you think women will soldier on or will there be just mass burnout and we're going to feel it economically? If we keep running the way we are and soldier on, which most, most women will want to do, yes, we're going to have a huge crisis uh, on our hands. Um, I think what's important is that we don't soldier on. I think it's important to bring awareness to the fact that there is a phenomenon called burnout um, and what we can do to uh, avoid getting there. Everything kind of eventually, your, your highest stress points, right, if you look at it, it boils down to economics and finances. Can I pay this bill? Can I meet this requirement? Can I, you know, it all kind of boils down there. Uh, it's as simple as our corporates looking at, if they're doing computer literacy and English, why not look at financial literacy? Uh, build, a sit build a solution, build a system where people understand how to manage their finances and are better able to then um, juggle what they need to juggle. Uh, it's not huge things, like it's, it's not, it doesn't have to come down to being something that hits your bottom line and loses uh, manpower and man hours but it can be something as simple as financial literacy. Um, what about loans for entrepreneurship? You know, if someone has an additional source of income while they're working, they're taking that much of the stress and pressure and burden off. So there are ways that we can look at it. I think it's just that the conversation needs to start and needs to start fast before we see it both in men and women. Did you have a support network? I have a very close friend network and I'm eternally grateful to them because they did not move from my side um, until, you know, they were able to kind of uh, push me in the right direction of starting to remember things. They just sat with me for about two weeks. There would be someone always by my side. If someone walked up to us, they would say, okay, this is so-and-so. Do you remember? Do you need to remember? Until my memory started getting better, I had a, you know, it was just amazing how they all put their lives on hold for me and I really appreciate that. But how many people have that? So start building that also, you know, um, and uh, kind of, I think the message that I would want to give is that be aware that this can happen to you, to the person next to you, and do what you need to do to be prepared for that. What do you need to do to be prepared for that? See the signs and start accepting for yourself, as well as start telling people around you that doing your best is enough. You don't have to always put out the fire. If necessary, let the house burn. If you were to give women a word of advice on finding yourself and having some me time, what would you say? Even making time for yourself, making time for yoga is an added stress, right? So I think the advice I would give is look into your heart and understand that you are being the best that you can be. Stop pushing yourself to be superwoman. Stop pushing yourself to be um, superhuman. Stop treating yourself like this rubber band and pushing yourself to expand just because you can. Because eventually the, the rubber is going to give out and you're going to break. Conserve that so that you can do it when you need to, as opposed to doing it all the time, every time. So superwoman we may be, but we need to take care of ourselves as well. Absolutely. I think that's what makes us superwomen if we take care of ourselves. Thank you, Rai.